In this video, we're going to look at some of the basic DSP effects that are at your disposal in SAR. Although I say basic DSP effects, the included effects should be most of what you need in terms of using effects to spice up any synthesizer sound. The best thing is that they are here in the instrument itself, so there is no need to use any external effects from your host application. The effects included in SAR are chorus, phaser, delay, and reverb, the essential DSP toolkit. The effects share the same location on the interface as the on screen keyboard. So if you can see this keyboard, then you will not be able to view the effects. In this case, simply click on the bar labeled image line to switch the view. Each effect has its relative controls, as well as an on off switch to enable or disable the effect. Let's begin on the left and move towards the right. So first up is chorus. A chorus effect works much in the same way as a unison effect works. The audio is split and delayed into multiple voices, which will have a slight pitch shifting applied to them, and then fed back into the source to create the illusion of multiple sound sources. The depth control determines the amount of pitch shifting that is applied to the audio, and is responsible for how thick or full the chorus effect will appear. The modified audio from the chorus is also modulated by an oscillator. The rate of this modulation is determined with the rate control. And the mix control sets the balance between the dry or unaffected audio and the wet processed audio. Moving over to the next effect is the phaser effect. For those that may not know, a phaser works by splitting the audio into two paths. One of those paths is essentially processed by an all-pass filter and fed back in the input. As the modified path has been processed by the filter, the resultant audio no longer has the same phase as the input, resulting in that out-of-phase sound. The amount of phase change will directly influence the character of the effect, which is controlled by the center knob, as it controls the frequency of the filter used. Most of you that have worked with phasers before might associate the effect with a sweeping character. This is achieved by the oscillator, in most cases a low frequency oscillator, modulating the frequency of the all pass filter. This continuous modulation creates that sweeping sound. The rate control will determine the speed of the LFO that is modulating the filter. The depth control determines the amplitude of the LFO. Increasing this value will make the sweeping effect more prominent. The feedback controls how much of the audio that is modified by the all-pass filter is fed back into the original source. Larger values will tend to bring out more of the high-end harmonics of the audio. And finally, the mix control acts as the wet-dry control. Lower values will produce more of the unprocessed audio, while higher values allow more of the processed audio to be heard. Once again, moving over, the next effect is the delay effect. I am sure some of you have played around with some sort of delay effect before, so most of the parameters here should be fairly self explanatory. SAR's delay is actually two delays one is dedicated to the left channel, and the other to the right channel. It is possible to set the delay length for each channel independently. You may have also noticed that the delay times are set as beats. This is because the delay is internally synced to the host tempo. The feedback controls the amount of delay that is heard. Each time the delay is heard, the volume is lower than the previous. Increasing this value makes the perceived decrease in volume less per echo. Thus the delay is heard for a longer period of time. If you were looking for a spacey delay, then you would want to increase this value. If you were looking for more of a slapback delay, then lower values would be more appropriate. Use the depth control to have the internal LFO modulate the delay time. The low and high cut filters apply low frequency and high frequency filters to the delayed audio. Turn the low cut parameter up to allow only higher frequencies in the delay to pass. And finally, use the mix knob as a dry wet mix to balance between the delayed audio and the original audio. Carrying on, the next and final DSP effect is reverb. Perhaps one of the most commonly used effects, the reverb is used to emulate 
the sound of a room or other space. SAR comes with a reverb built in, which is perfect, so you are not required to use a reverb effect in your host application. The controls for SAR's reverb are simplistic and straightforward, still is able to produce a rich reverb to go with your synth sounds. The first control is decay. This determines the length of time that the reverb can be heard after a note is played. Larger values will give the impression that the sound is being played in a larger room, as the natural echoes of a large room can last for some time. Shorter values will recreate smaller, tighter rooms. The high cut filter is used to remove higher frequencies from the reverb. Higher values of this parameter allow more high frequencies to get through, while lower ones begin to cut the high frequencies. The damping control emulates how higher frequencies tend to have a different decay time and levels than lower frequencies when certain materials are in the emulated room. Higher values of this parameter provide more of the emulated damping effect. And that brings us to an end of our look at the DSP effects available to you in SAR. In the next video, we'll look at ways to further shape your sound with a vast array of modulation control options that are provided via the MIDI modulation matrix.